to be vigilant against potential over the past year the did you know the seventh day of the week is saturday not sunday remember the sabbath day to keep it whole six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the sabbath of the lord thy god Which is the Sabbath day? Saturday is the Sabbath day. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea 336 AD transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Why did the Catholic Church substitute Sunday for Saturday? The Church substituted Sunday for Saturday because Christ rose from the dead on a Sunday and the Holy Ghost descended upon the Apostles on a Sunday. As we saw, the Catholic Church decided to tweak one of God's holy commandments. And the resulting new version of the fourth commandment successfully deceived dozens of generations of faithful believers. That was a brilliant move, don't you think? But hold on. Would the Catholic Church deliberately go against God? I don't think so. I believe there is a very powerful, very scary dark force at play. This dark force is quietly and effectively creating discord in our lives and belief system. I bet you can guess who, but can you guess why and how? Once upon a time in heaven, there was an angel named Lucifer. He was well trusted and important, but that made him too proud. He wanted to be as powerful as God and even take his place. Lucifer became jealous and rebelled against God by trying to take over. Lucifer convinced many other angels to join him, spreading doubt and causing trouble in heaven. But God quickly stopped Lucifer and banished him and his followers to earth. This event started a big fight between good and evil. Lucifer, now best known as Satan, became the adversary of God and humanity. He wants to ruin God's plan to save people by leading them away from him. While in the Garden of Eden, Satan chose to trick more of God's creations to join his side with the aim to build a larger army. After pursuing Eve to break God's law, he gained greater influence over humanity. But God, in his mercy, created a salvation plan, and it was an incredibly generous one. He sent his only son to die for our sins. That's how much he loves us and wants us to join him once again. After Jesus' death, Satan realized we can all be saved by having faith in Christ. Aware that his time is short, Satan began twisting the most important book in the world, the book that can guide us back to heaven and to our Creator. The Bible. Since Satan cannot change the words himself, he works through vulnerable and ignorant people that he can easily deceive. With that in mind, he started by making us break the fourth commandment. He swapped the Holy Saturday Sabbath for Sunday. His plan worked so well that even though everybody knows Sunday is the first day of the week, only a few of us seem to care about it. Now, what day of the week is the Sabbath day? If you go to any normal dictionary, you'll find that it says, Saturday is the seventh day of the week. The encyclopedia will tell you that. Matter of fact, in over 105 languages of the world, 
the word, no matter what the religion of the country is, the word for Saturday is Sabbath day. But Pastor Doug, hasn't the calendar been changed so we don't really know? Calendar's been changed many times. That's one of the famous myths that you hear. Oh, can't tell what day's the Sabbath. <laughs> People never have a problem with what day of the week it is until they hear the Sabbath truth. Fact is, if you don't know what day the Sabbath is, you don't know what day Sunday is either, right? But uh, you can know. No change to the calendar ever affects that. The Sabbath and the calendar, the weekly cycle, even though you see them on the same calendar on the wall, they're two completely independent measurements of time. No matter what you do to the calendar, it doesn't change the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's why your birthday is a different day of the week every year, right? Somebody wrote the U.S. Naval Observatory about this question, and this is a copy of the letter that came back. And they said, uh, we've had occasion to investigate the results of the works of specialists in chronology, and we have never found one of them that ever has the slightest doubt about the continuity of the weekly cycle since long before the Christian era. There has been no change in the calendar that has ever affected the continuity of the weekly cycle. Pope Gregory made a change back in, I think, 1582. Thursday, October 4th, was followed by Friday, October 15th. They added 10 days. It changed the calendar. Did it change the week? No, it doesn't affect the week. So there's no question about what day of the week is the seventh day. And you know, for me, what the slam dunk is for me on this, you got a whole Jewish nation all over the world. Do they know what day the seventh day of the week is? But how did Satan manage to change it so seamlessly? And when did he do it? In both the Old and New Testaments, the Bible consistently defines the seventh day as Saturday, the Sabbath day, as Exodus 31, 12 and 13 states. The Sabbath is a sign between us and God. Jesus and his disciples adhere to this law and there's no biblical indication of a switch. If the change didn't originate in the Bible, where did it come from? After the Apostles' era, early Christian church history witnessed the fulfillment of false prophecy about Christianity losing its path and falling away from the truth. New beliefs, like Gnosticism, surfaced, blending Christianity with other ideologies. Simultaneously, there was a growing aversion to Jewish practices, leading to unconventional interpretations of Christian teachings. Despite claiming to be the first Christian emperor, after Constantine and his army converted to Christianity, they still clung to pagan customs. This integration of old habits including sun worship, paved the way for the acceptance of Sunday as the main day of worship. In 321 AD, Constantine issued a decree designating Sunday as a day of rest. On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest, and let all workshops be closed. The Catholic Church made Sunday worship official through church meetings after Constantine's decision. Many historical sources, both Catholic and Protestant, confirm this. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, 2nd edition, states We all gather on the Day of the Sun, for it is the first day after the Jewish Sabbath, but also the first day when God, separating matter from darkness, made the world, and on this same day Jesus Christ, our Savior, rose from the dead. In 364 AD, the Bishop of Rothenburg, Charles Joseph, decrees Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day, but the Lord's day they shall especially honor, and, as being Christians, shall, if possible, do not work on that day. If, however, they are found Judaizing, they shall be shut out from Christ. 
The Catholic Church itself recognizes publicly that they change Saturday to Sunday. We Catholics do not accept the Bible as the only rule of faith. Besides the Bible, we have the Living Church, the authority of the Church, as a rule to guide us. We say this Church, instituted by Christ to teach and guide men through life, has the right to change the ceremonial laws of the Old Testament and hence we accept her change of the Sabbath to Sunday. We frankly say, yes, the Church made this change, made this law, as she made many other laws. For instance, the Friday abstinence, the unmarried priesthood, the laws concerning mixed marriages, the regulation of Catholic marriages, and a thousand other laws. We also say that of all Protestants, the Seventh-day Adventists are the only group that reason correctly and are consistent with their teachings. It is always somewhat laughable to see the Protestant churches in pulpit and legislature demand the observance of Sunday, of which there is nothing in the Bible. Like this text, there are many other examples, some of which I left for you in the description below. Brilliant plan, I must admit. Look at how skillfully Satan distorted God's law. Even though Christianity represents the largest religious belief system, there's 31.5% of 8.1 billion people on Earth most followers worship on Sundays. But do you know who's infinite times more brilliant? God. He revealed everything in the Bible through prophets, including what will happen when the world as we know it will end, and why is it so important to keep Saturday holy. The narrative is laid out in the book of Daniel and Revelation. All we need to do is start reading and searching for the right path back to him. I did it, and I found out that the Seventh-day Adventist Church has the most accurate and logical explanations of these prophecies. In summary, this is what will happen. The Catholic Church and the USA will unite, creating a single world religion. And guess what will be the day of worship? You guessed right. The Venerable Day of the Sun. This new religion will be forced on all of us, regardless of our religious beliefs. We won't be able to buy or sell if we don't keep it. We will suffer greatly if we chose not to obey the rules, and our freedom will be completely taken from us. You see the master plan? It's all about worship since the beginning of time. Since Satan wanted to be God himself, the question for us today remains, who will we choose to worship? God and his holy commandments? or Satan and his people. Once we have decided, we will be marked as either gods or Satan's. And that, and that my friends, friends, will be the end. Yeah. Jesus will come back for the people who chose to believe in him and his written word. And how we get back to a moral rebirth in this country, I don't know, since we are slowly eroding religion at every opportunity that we have. Uh, probably we should be debating a bill requiring every American to attend a church of their choice on Sunday. The connection between Project 2025's vision of a Christian autocracy and the likely Republican nominee, Donald Trump, became chillingly clear this week. You have men? You have women and you have religion. If you look at it, you have more than the men, you have more than the women. You have such power, but you really, you weren't allowed to use that power 
and you're now allowed to use it. I get in there, you're going to be using that power at a level that you've never used it before. It's going to bring back the churchgoer. I mean, you have to see. I don't like the charts when I see charts where they're going in the wrong direction. We don't like that. We're going to bring it back. And I really believe it's the biggest thing missing from this country. It's the biggest thing missing. We have to bring back our religion. We have to bring back Christianity in this country. We are in the end times battle, but we don't believe it's the end of the world. If you read the saints carefully, they say it's not the end of the world, it's the end of this era. Something new is coming. The greatest triumph of the church in all of world history is coming. When the whole world will become Catholic, the entire world. This plan that they want to put in place if the Republican Party wins the presidency upon the inauguration. According to the New York Times, those plans include bringing independent agencies under direct presidential control. It's kind of being pitched under the guise of dismantling the administrative state. They say they would plan to do this with any Republican president. It's about deregulation. It's about deconstructing the administrative state. There's a network of conservative groups who are backing this effort, like the Heritage Foundation. Take this very seriously. Don't think this is a joke. It is incredibly alarming. Frightening development. You don't have to be a civics dork to know that you don't want that. <laughs> We've never seen anything like this in American history. We will bring back law and order in our country. And you're going to believe in God. You're going to believe in God because God is here and God is watching. We're very close to World War III and this will be a war like no other. You see how close we are? All of these are already written in the Bible. It's time to wake up or sleep forever. I was always an atypical kid, but that's not why I chose to follow Seventh-day Adventist teachings and interpretations of the Bible. My motivation was based on how I could repay the only God who was always present in my darkest of days and how to best prepare for the afterlife while still on the planet Earth. I didn't just wake up one day believing everything the Seventh-day Adventists teach about God and the Bible. I didn't have any magical moments or visions. I had to search for the truth on my own, and it was a long and inconvenient process. Although you might think some of my beliefs were influenced by my church, to my disadvantage, for a long time, I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't feel close to God from the beginning. But after many trials and bad outcomes over the years, I realized everything written in the Bible was there for a reason. We need to follow it in order to have a truly fulfilled life. On my journey to understanding what happens after we die, I looked at the four main ways people interpreted the book of Revelation. Historicism, Preterism, Futurism, and Idealism. Historicism is when we understand symbols in the Bible as representing real things from history, from the past until Jesus comes back. Preterism is about events that already happened before 400 AD. Futurism looks at things that are going to happen in the future. Idealism is when events in the Bible don't have any historical fulfillment. I saw that historicism matches best with my understanding of the Bible. And while most Protestants agree with this interpretation, no major Christian group fully follows Jesus' word in John 14, 15, where he says, If you love me, keep my commandments. That led me towards a fairly small group of people, the Seventh-day Adventists, who seem to be the only ones following God's commandments, like Jesus and the Apostles did. At least on paper. 
everything makes so much more sense to me now, especially after studying the whole Bible a few times. Following the Seventh-day Adventist teachings is the only path for me. I made this video not because I want to prove to anyone that my religion is best, but because I want to challenge you to rethink what you believe in and who you really follow, and what will happen if you continue following them. If we were to reflect on what we know about Jesus, we would not be able to fit him in most religious groups that we see today. He was humble, kind, and selfish, forgiving, and pure love. I left a few links to great documentaries for you in the description below, in case you are interested in discovering more about the end times and the path to salvation from a perspective of a Seventh-day Adventist. But don't stop there. Observe and study other points of view and pray that God helps guide your efforts in the right direction. See you on the next one. Much love.